And welcome back to the Cordell and Cordell and Men's Divorce Video and Podcast. I'm Scott Trout, CEO and Managing Partner of Cordell and Cordell. Each day we continue to bring you a new topic and information related to family law as it's being affected by COVID-19. Uh, as I've said, that COVID-19 has affected all matters before, during, and after divorce uh, across the board in family law, unlike anything else we've ever seen, uh, in, at least in my lifetime and in the 27 years that I've been practicing law. As always, uh, keep in mind that this is not an attorney-client relationship, and we cannot give you legal advice today. We are simply here to educate you, provide speaking points and topics for you to write down and, and go seek an attorney and find one that practices exclusively in family law, like we do. You know, we have offices around the country. We're in our 30th year now with including offices in the UK. If you'd like a consultation uh, after re, uh, listening to us and, and hearing more about it, you can reach us uh, at 866 Dad's Law or find us on the web at cordellcordell.com. Tune into our virtual town hall, which we'll hold now monthly. And we'll talk about spot issues uh, affecting guys considering divorce after divorce and all things during divorce as well. And you can also email questions that you have that you would like answered at coronavirus.divorce at cordellaw. Com. So today, let's get started. I'm joined by John up in Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate being here. Hey, thanks for joining. You know, we always do this every day. We we find another Cordell attorney from around the country and in the 37 states that we're in and the 100 offices that we have. And so we all want to know what's going on in North Carolina and what's happening with the court system and what guys can do. Yeah, North Carolina, unfortunately, we, we really have been impacted by this pandemic. Uh, th this is something that, of course, no one could have anticipated. Our courts didn't anticipate. Our judges didn't. Certainly, our attorneys just could not anticipate this. Uh, we've been doing the best that we can with it, uh, but Lord knows there have been some some ramifications as a result, and, and specifically uh, specifically regarding custody. That's I would say that's the area that's been affected uh, the most. And it is, you know, we talk around, you know, with some lawyers of our lawyers around in California and, and New York, and it, they're always concerned that they can't do anything and because they hear closed. And so I know that I think the last time we spoke with someone in North Carolina, that, you know, we talked about guidelines and looking at it court by court. But I, I assume that depending upon the county, there's ability to take some action, at least to get in the queue, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, filings uh, can still be made with the clerk and, and have been available throughout this, this pandemic. Uh, but really where, where to start often, whenever we're dealing with an issue, for example, of one parent threatening to withhold the child from the other parent, is simply by picking up the phone. Uh, if that opposing party is unrepresented, um, you know, obviously can't, can't give them legal advice, but still get them on the phone and try to have a rational conversation with that opposing party or uh, an, an opposing counsel. That's, that's really where you do want to start. Yeah. So today's topic, we want to talk a little bit about contempt. Um, oftentimes, uh, lawyers throw around legal terms, and you and I exactly know what we're talking about, and uh, we yeah. can just move on. And Many guys are like, I, I don't understand what that means, the word contempt. You know, I have contempt for you. Um, sure. So really in the legal <laughs> sense. So let's talk to guys, you know, hey, so we can explain to them, maybe this is something they need to consider that's available to them. What does generally contempt mean in family law? Right. So when you have an order, uh, the way that you hold the other parents' uh, feet to the fire so to speak, is if they're not complying with that order, you got to put the court on notice that they're not in compliance. And how you do that is with a writing, a motion specifically. And that's a motion to show cause, motion for contempt. Um, and what you're letting the court know is, hey, look, this other parent, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing pursuant to this order. Uh, and essentially, you switch the, the burden to that other party. That per party will eventually have to come to court and say, well, yes, I am in compliance, or no, I'm not in compliance, and I'm not in compliance because of X, Y, Z. It's then incumbent upon the court to determine whether or not they have the ability to comply with the order. Um, and, and that's really where you do get into the weeds of, of the argument. Um, but that's typically what, what you would want to do if you can't get somebody to comply with the order. Uh, in other words, returning your child to you for your court order visitation, immediately you want to get on that motion to show cause, uh, motion for a contempt to let the other side know that you're serious if they're just not going to have a rational conversation with you or your attorney. 
Yeah. And so, you know, we, we relate that to COVID-19 and this pandemic. We've been talking about the Niles of custody, we've, as you suggest. We've talked a lot about using, you know, we've seen parents uh, use COVID-19 on both sides. So it's not, you yeah. know, uh, mm -hmm. one or the other. And it's crazy. We talked about, so what does a guy do, you know, if um, their spouse or ex-spouse says, hey, you know what, you're not going to see the child because of COVID-19. What do they do? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, we're we're seeing a lot of that people being very opportunistic with with COVID and using that as 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 an excuse to not turn the child over. So as I should suggested before, first step is you know get in touch with the opposing party. Have your attorney get in touch with the opposing party or their attorney. The next step really is preparing that 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 motion for contempt. Now, alternatively, uh, alternative to 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 the motion to show cause, motion for contempt. There are some emergency motions out there that, that crafty attorneys may very well be able to, to use. Now, here in North Carolina, and this is obviously can be very dependent upon the jurisdiction that you're in, uh, here in North Carolina, there are, are uh, two grounds when you can get an emergency motion to have a child return to you, and that is when one party is threatening to abscond with the minor child, so take the minor child out of the state with the purpose and this is important, the purpose of evading the jurisdiction. Uh, the other set of grounds is when there's a substantial risk of bodily injury to the child or sexual abuse. Then obviously the court has the authority to immediately enter an order uh, compelling one parent to turn the child over to the other parent and, and actually have law enforcement, law enforcement assist them in, in doing so. Um, wh where the rubber meets the road though with regard to, to COVID is, um, a substantial risk of bodily injury. What is what does that encompass? I mean, when people think of that, they think of, unfortunately, those those parents out there who 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 hurt their children, right? But does that cover um, uh, recklessly exposing a child to COVID uh, that may result in bodily injury? And there really isn't a whole lot of common law out there to to help guide us through that. But very well. Uh, I think there, there, there is an argument that can be made for uh, that, type of, that type of relief. So uh, there, are, there are a number of ways where your attorney can get crafty and, and try to make something happen for you sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think, you know, we, I always think back to the article with the, um, the woman who was a doctor and she was the ER doc and the dad was denying her custody and then he won originally and then got it set aside. And I think I think initially on what I think I was seeing and we all may have been is uh, judges overreacting a little bit and maybe using caution and granting these things because we really didn't know whether or not, you know, engaging in that behavior was increasing risk to the child of bodily harm or injury. But I think as things have kind of leveled out and plateaued, we got a better understanding, perhaps not great, uh, but we're seeing judges saying, you know what? Um, and, and funny that we talk about this, uh, our fellow attorney, Stephanie Horton, yesterday in our podcast used the word covenient, which I think is marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, I, I'm going to trademark oh, it. She's and brilliant. <laughs> he is. I, I have to tell you, I'm going to trademark it and I'm going to steal it from her because in this time, it is a covenient excuse for people to say, oh, because of COVID, right? You're not going to see the child. Uh, I think it's judges are smart now. They're getting wise to this covenient excuse. Yes, I think that, you know, so we have to be careful, not, not only for us to deny for guys, but also guys to enforce, right? So you've got to make sure if you've been exposed, you've traveled, I get it. Uh, but if you right. have none of those factors, right, you should be seeking affirmative relief, some sort of injunction, emergency, temporary restraining order or something, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's, uh, uh, um, that's, a, that's a very salient point, the use of restraining orders. That's, that's another form of emergency relief. And when I say emergency relief, that's when a judge can consider something without having a hearing. Essentially, they review these motions in chambers, at least that's how we do it in North Carolina, and they'll determine whether or not there are sufficient grounds to enter an order without a hearing. So that's a way of making something happen really quickly. Um, in the context of, of COVID, what you may run into, and, and I kind of alluded to this beforehand, uh, that other set of, of grounds that would allow for emergency custody, and one of those being is absconding with a minor child to evade the jurisdiction. If you already have an order um, with an opposing party that resides in a different state, like we here in North Carolina, we neighbor Virginia, so we, we do have a, a few opposing parties that reside in Virginia, and the children will, will go and visit that parent during the summer, for example, 
Um, and if that parent says, well, I'm, I'm not going to turn the child over, you may very well run into a judge that will not give you emergency relief because they are not evading the jurisdiction. They participated in the lawsuit in North Carolina. They've never uh, missed a hearing. Clearly, they will come to North Carolina uh, when you notice a hearing, so they may not give you immediate relief. Well, uh, perhaps you can get some backdoor relief, and I've, I've done this before uh, under different circumstances, uh, but I went to, went to court and essentially made the argument that the children have gone to school here in North Carolina the entire time, and judge, what I want you to do is restrain that other parent from enrolling that child in any other school district other than, than uh, their home school district here in North Carolina, and we've actually been able to uh, have judges enter that order and get the children back sooner rather than later. If they're not willing to do emergency ex parte custody, see if you can get a TRO. For some dads out there, the coronavirus pandemic has become a pretext to limit access to their children. Other dads have been pushed out of key decisions affecting their children's lives. If you're one of those dads, Cordell & Cordell is here for you, as always, but with expanded services. We can meet you in person or by video conference on weekdays, evenings, or weekends. Our goal is to step up our service to meet your needs now. Yesterday, during our virtual town hall, uh, we talked about success stories during COVID-19, and I think it was a fitting end to our weekly broadcast because it, it talked about the message that we've been saying is that take action, there is relief, um, and it's exactly, there are certain circumstances where judges will act right now, even though the courts are physically closed, and you can utilize the technology, you can utilize the telephone, and guys out there watching and listening right now, there is help. I mean, that's the yes. good news, is that there are strategies, there are tools, and there are ways to get some of the relief if you're being denied it unreasonably and unlawfully. And Absolutely. I think though, what's important, and I think you know, it's, it's things to consider, no matter where you are around the country, is know your judge, right? Absolutely. That's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, if, if you're gonna get crafty with your pleadings, you know that it's gonna land with your judge. If your judge is gonna look at you know, these, some of these pleadings, uh, when you have an attorney that's thinking outside of the box and say, ah, you know, this really doesn't fit the mold and, um, you know, that, that leaves a sour taste in their mouth. You don't want to run into that judge later on when you do have to bring it back to court and, and, and make, your, make your arguments. That judge is going to have a, perhaps a negative pers perspective. So uh, you really do have to know your judge. Um, uh, if, we, if we can't make immediate relief work, you do have to be aware of the fact that often in custody, you're playing the long game. OK, um, and and while a judge may be hesitant to order immediate relief and immediately hold the other uh, parents feet to the fire, um, if you do have to file a motion to modify a motion for contempt, and you're not going to get that heard for a few weeks or so. You're still going to benefit from that. A judge is still going to look at that opposing party as as, as a wrongdoer and, and, and hopefully do what is right and um, do something to hold that parents feet to the fire. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important, like yesterday, uh, Brad Ward in our Kansas office in Wichita talked about a success story and that he knew that this judge, he had to be persistent uh, mm -hmm. and he had to continue to push, but he knew he could because he knew that this judge wouldn't yeah. take offense to it. And, and, it's, and as a result, after three or four times trying to bring up a motion, trying to get emergency relief, he got it. Uh, and it is, it's about finding a lawyer who knows the system, knows the judges, not that there's something improper, but you know what they do. You know their routine, you know what they rule like, you know every judge has some uniqueness to them. Uh, and yeah. you know what you can bring to the table. And I think that's really, really good advice. So uh, honestly, John, great stuff. I think this made it very simple for guys to understand uh, contempt, uh, restraining orders, emergency relief, to know where they can go. And, and I think getting out the information that there is help is huge and you made it simple. So thanks for joining and giving guys uh, that straight, that. straightforward information. It's good stuff. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. So we'll continue to bring you stuff just like this and, and try to give it to you in a very simple, straightforward manner uh, where you can take action. I mean, this is what uh, podcasts and videocasts is all about. 
is to give you some tools in a very brief, quick manner over 15 minutes to say, take action, enforce your rights for guys out there. So continue to find us on the web at CordellCordell.com. Give us a call, 866 Law. Love to talk and have a consultation with you from around the country. And obviously, John's available up in Raleigh and throughout North Carolina as well. So until next time, stay safe, stay well, have a good week. <music>